بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله in this video today we'll be going over the recitation of Surah Al-Ma'un in accordance with the rules of Tajweed as usual we'll be looking at one word at a time and we'll be moving from one ayah, one verse, to the next. Whenever we stumble upon a tajweed rule, I will point out the rule for you, explain what it means, and then show you how the rule is applied. So let's begin with the basmala, as always. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Now, just as a reminder, every letter in Arabic that takes a kasra has the E sound, a very distinct E sound. Bismillah. The lam right here occurs in lafzul jalala in the word Allah. To determine whether it is read with tafkhim or tarqiq, we look at what precedes it. In this case, we have a kasra on the meme. So the lam is read with a thin um, in a thin and light way. Bismillah with two counts. Hirrahman. The ra is heavy because it takes a fatha. Same thing over here. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ayah number one. Now notice over here the ra is heavy again because it's maftuh, takes a fatha, but is flanked by two hamzas, both of which are light. So to recite this correctly, make sure the hamza is light, the ra is heavy, and the second hamza is light. Al ra and make sure the ya with the sukun on top is pronounced very clearly. This is two counts long. Now notice the the here, the the here, the ba and the da. All of these letters have a kasra underneath. You want to have the e sound. Over here, we have a special type of mud called mud al adi al sukun. It's a mud that results due to stopping at the end of the ayah. You can elongate it two, four, or six counts. Um, for the purpose of this demonstration, we will elongate it with four counts. So, one more time. Ayah number two. The the here has two counts. The the here also has two counts. And then over here, we have the very interesting case of an ayn with a shadda on top. So just as a reminder, a shadda is basically a sukun followed by something that takes a harka. In this case, we have a dhamma. Okay. So, you're basically reading Now, care must be taken not to overemphasize the ayn. Um, you don't want to make it too heavy and thick. So, let's read this ayah one last time. There is, shouldn't be any problems uh, anywhere else here. فَذَٰلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ Ayah number three. وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَىٰ طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينِ Lam here has two counts. يَحُضُّ عَلَىٰ two counts. And the ayin here has also has two counts. And make sure again, these letters that take a kasra have the e sound. Um, 
Uh, one note about muds. Make sure that the noon, the nasal sound of the noon, doesn't kick in prematurely. So, in the word miskin, when you are elongating with a ya, yeah, ki, there should not be any nasal sound. There might be some nasal sound that comes naturally, but really the noon comes in only in the very end. So you should not be reciting like this. Miskin, right, where the noon sound is spilling all over into spilling over into the mud. This comes in at the last second where um, the sukun is actually um, you know placed on the noon and that's where the nasal sound is. Ayah number four. Fawailulilmusalin. Wai, wai. This is a lean. Make sure the ya with the sukun is pronounced very clearly. And then over here we have a tanween followed by a lam. So there are four rules re re related to nun sakina and tanween. They are ilhal, ilgham, ilqalab, wa ikhfa. Every time you encounter a nun sakina or tanween, you want to look at the letter, the the letter that follows. In this case, we have a lam. So the rule is going to be um, You want to assimilate the tanween into the lam without any nasal sound. So it's as if the tanween is dropped and you're just saying lul, lul. The salad here is a heavy letter. So make sure you read that with tafkhim, with a full mouth. Fawailul. Ayah number five. Two counts long. Whom? Now this meme should be read with ilhal, with in a manifest and clear way. Whom? Whom? Make sure the sound comes from your lips. Now we have a noon sakina, a noon with the sukun, followed by sod. Okay. This rule is called ikhfa. What you want to do is you want to hold on to the nasal sound on the noon sakina for just two counts because of the sod. La is two counts long. You have the E sound here and here. The meme should be read with its heart with clarity. Sahun. Sa is two counts long. Let's read ayah number five one time. Alladina hum an salatihim sahun. Ayah number six. Alladina hum yuraun. Over here you have two counts. Whom the meme is read with clarity. You Now ra again because it is maftuh has a fatha. Make sure you read it with tafkhim. And in this case we have a mud called mud al mutasid or um, you may hear people call it mud al wajib al mutasil. Basically you have one of the letters of mud, an alif, followed by a hamza in the same word. You elongate four or five counts. Four or five counts. Okay. Now pay attention to the ya and the hamza that's flanking the ra. These are both light. So you don't want the hamza to be read with tafkhim, uh, nor do you want the ya to be read with tafkhim, just the ra. Let's read this ayah one time. Alladina hum yuraun. And the last ayah. Wa yamna'oon al ma'oon. This meme should be read with idhar. Two counts over here. Two counts over here. And that's it. So nothing special going on in the last verse. Okay, now let's read the entire surah one time from the very beginning. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون And that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.